Welcome to 3Mac. Do you want to learn about computational design, advanced manufacturing, materials modeling, or integrity assessment? Then this is the channel for you. I regularly upload new content, so please hit the subscribe button below for regular updates. Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In today's video, I will again cover a topic which was asked by a subscriber. And in this video, I'm gonna work on developing a an FE model for flow forming which is also known as metal spinning or also called shear forming in some literature if you are really interested in any of these models or any other models which are in on our youtube channel then you can always access through this website and all the models are there and so what is flow forming if you are not really familiar with that you have a flat sheet you take this flat sheet and you basically form this kind of using the flow forming process so sometimes in many cases your normal deep drawing or metal forming process doesn't work because your metal doesn't have that kind of forming limit so you go with this kind of process it involves it's a very dynamic process it involves a lot of friction and heating and cooling of the material so that's how you can achieve this kind of uh, deformation which you see in in this case as a bucket so just to give you more sort of practical perspective if it works this is a youtube video so you can also freely watch it so this shows you how the whole process work and then you see you have a sheet as i showed you and you want to form it in this shape which is there at the back so you first fit the middle part with the pressure with this die if you call it a die and then this tool comes in and using the friction and the pressure force this starts to deform and that's what you see here in this case they are deformed brass but people have used many different materials steels aluminium etc and it's used for many different applications in aerospace industry as well so so remember you have to fix the middle part with the die so that the part can rotate and then using friction and pressure of this roller you can basically form it i'll just move it forward see how it works sometimes you need to do multiple passes again the process optimization comes from the process design engineers or FE simulations and when you see there is some spring bag the profile is not homogeneous so you might have to do multiple passes as well as you see in this case this is another example which is it goes in a much faster way so I hope this makes sense you can make any kind of shape depending on the die and the angles uh, and the pressure you apply through this these kind of rollers so what we're going to do we're going to create a sheet which is this one when we create a die on the back and then we will also create a kind of a roller and we will do forming of similar kind of shape which is again coming from a paper which was sent to me by the subscriber and i have to try to try my best to simplify this thing so let's move on and if i can move to the next slide yep so what you see here is we will start with the sheet this is the die so we want to form this sheet into this shape using this kind of roller this will be spinning as it was in the case of a real experiment this will also rotate because it will be tied on the surface with this surface and then this will be coming in contact and then it will be trying to form it the simulation looks something like this this is the animation of the FE simulation that you see it's i have simplified a few things i'm not creating any frictional heating here and it's just to demonstrate the whole process of how it works but you can include that when you're defining interactions and everything and i will show you that so let's jump into abacus and see how we can model this again if you are interested in the model the models all other models can be accessed through this website okay let's look into the abacus model and see how or what i have really done and maybe you can find some issues later on the model again will be available at the website which i showed you in the just moments before so you can access the model from there once it's available so let's go into the detail and i will try to be as slow as possible so first thing is you need to create the part again i have created everything in abacus but you can create in solidworks and import it again import the model here and again i have videos on that so you can have a look at that in the channel so this is the first part i created this is sketch and then i basically revolved it so what you have to do is you just go to create part and I went to 3D and then I modeled as analytical rigid because I'm not interested in the deformation of this. But if you want to see the wear and tear of this as a part of the study, then you can model it as elastic. 
and then I will go with revolved so I will create a sketch and then I will revolve it so I, that's what I have done here I'm not going to show it again you can have a look at the video how I model the revolution, revolutionary parts then the second part is a sheet again for the sheet I created a circle and then I extrude it for a, with a millimeter four millimeter thickness I think it was like that in the paper or you can also model it as a shell so I have I have tried both of them there so you see I have uh, here as a solid model and I have also here as a shell model then also for the case of this tool cylindrical tool which will apply pressure and deform the material I have created this object again the geometry is coming from the paper so I just used it from there so these are my parts then the next thing is the property since most of my parts are rigid so these are, this is also rigid part only thing I need to do is I need to define the properties of the sheet so for that you can see I have created few sections shell and solids and for both because I ran it with shell elements as well as with solid element and it worked and in this video I will only show you the solid element results so property wise again for materials you see I have defined the density elastic property Japanese model Poisson's ratio and uh, data again this is uh, my own data uh, as I, I couldn't I, I had no time to use the data from the paper so you can use your own data there and I have many veggie videos on how to define elastic plastic material property so you can do that this is was well just to, in case if you want to use the elastic dies and, and the tool then you can define the elasticity and also the elastic uh, density and the elastic properties of the second material but in this case we don't need it then you create a section and if it's a solid part solid sheet then you use a solid section as I have done here this one if it's a shell you're using this as shell then you can use the other one so in this case I have created this how to create that you just create this you select solid homogeneous and then you select the material definition so material one was my elastic plastic and I create okay and then there will be a section four there once I have that then I go to the assign section I can select the whole comp geometry here and then it will give me the list of the section which are eligible for assigning and I assign section number one which is a shell which cannot be assigned in this case or shell or, or section two so this this is I think the shell geometry but if you look at the one which is a solid one so you see this is a solid the thickness here so in this case if I now assign this so if I select this geometry then the eligible sections would be these ones so section 3 is a solid one so definitely you will assign that section 2 and 1 you can assign the shell as well but since it was, a, it was a solid model so I have used the solid homogeneous thing here so I hope I haven't confused you with that it's just a solid model I have used in this case and I assigned a solid section as I have shown you here then I go to the assembly and then you can instance all the parts which you want and then you can translate and rotate as we have done in many other videos if you are not familiar with all these things then have a look at my abacus cae course and on youtube and you will find that and you will find how we can do all these things that are in this, these are in notes so that's what i have done here so you see my tool is arranged in at an angle of around 45 degrees then i have a sheet and then i also have a punch there at the bottom as you remember we, we as a part of the simulation we need to tie the this surface with the sur surface of the tool so or die so basically I have done that and I will show you how you can do it and that's why if you go back to the part module you see that I have already created a kind of a partition in my cell again again if you're not familiar with partitioning I have a video on that so have a look at that but you can use these these options here partitioning and now next if you go to the step so you have three tools what I am going to do here is I will create I have created a, a dynamic step because a dynamic problem everything is rotating at a very high speed and I'm going to run it for 10 seconds again this 10 seconds is coming from the velocity of the tool I have defined to move in this direction along the tool surface so that's very much it if you look at the properties this is the total time 10 I have used I haven't changed anything at all in this part so this remains the same the important thing is since it's a very dynamic problem and severe deformation so your mesh will start to distort after certain values so you can use uh, adaptive meshing to improve the convergences and keep the things and I'm using ALE adaptive mesh domain I have picked this domain in this case 
and I'm using 10 frequency and five sweeps per increment to get the better quality mesh and rest is just default. So this basically helped me to reduce the mesh distortion issues. And nothing else was done here. Then we move to the interactions. In the interaction one, I have a general contact definition here, as you see, because I want Abacus to find out where the con when the contact is established. So you see it's a general contact and I'm using interaction properties one. I will show you the interaction property one properties just now, but how to create this again, if I'm referring again, again to my course, but you create, you select this and then you just continue and then it will automatically create it right now already have it so you can't really do it again for the interaction properties as you see here so basically i have used tangential behavior which is a frictional behavior and i have given a coefficient friction coefficient as this again this was coming from the subscriber and for normal contacts i'm using hard contact this means the contact pressure will be computed based on the elastic plastic properties of the contacting materials so this is this goes into your thing what else I have to do is you see, I mean, it's not that easy, but uh, I need to rotate the bottom die. If I can, yeah. So you see, I have to rotate. So I've created a reference point. So I have created a reference point here and I will fix all the boundary condition except for the rotational speed. So what I do is I go to the tools the reference point and I created a reference point in the part module for this and then I basically assign all the boundary conditions there similarly for the this tool since it can rotate freely along its axis which is this one uh, and rest is just uh, the boundary condition and fix either fix or, or boundary conditions applied based on the velocity or along the path so that basically requires a reference point as well it's a rigid part so you in any case if for rigid parts you need a reference point so again i have created a reference point for this part in the part module so you can do this clearly here if you go to part one you have a reference point you want to create a reference point you just say reference point and just click on that point wherever you want it to be so i, I have put it at the bottom along the axis of this part and similarly i have done the same for this part as well so going back to the interactions again, anything else I have to tell you? Yes, so I have a tie constraint here. And as you, as I told you, we need to tie the, the bottom surface of this sheet somewhere here and the top surface of this. So you see this surface is tied with this surface of the sheet so that when this part rotates, the sheet automatically rotates as was shown in the YouTube video uh, in, in, in my slides a few minutes before. All right, rest is just defaults. So I don't specify anything and I keep everything as a default in this case. Anything else I'm missing? If I am not, no, I think I have defined everything here. Then I go to the load, right? And the load is more tricky part now because bottom part is free, uh, part is easy because you need to fix everything at this reference point for this part. Only the rotation around the Y axis has to be at some velocity. And that's what I do here. So I basically, I show you then, you see every dimension, every degree of freedom is fixed except for UR2, which is a rotation about Y axis of this thing. And for rotation again, uh, there are speeds given in the process. So I'm just using a low speed, 15 radians per second, but you have to compute based on the RPMs given to you from the machine. Higher the RPM, more convergence issues you might have, especially mesh distortions will occur. So you might have to play around with different thing but in this case it worked for me so i apply this rotational speed of this radians per second then was the time to apply the boundary condition on this because we want this to not rotate along x y and z axis but it can be able to rotate around its own axis right so for this what i have done is i have created a datum and i will show under the datum planned with this axis as you see here and i will fix i'm fixing its u2 so see this is x so i'm fixing its u2 which is uh, which is along this line if i can rotate to show so you see so now it's, its axes are like this so this is its x axis and y axis and z axis is coming out in this direction so if i show you again when you see its u2 u3 are fixed and it can only move in x direction as it goes down right and also its rotations around two and three axes are fixed while it can freely rotate among 
when it comes in contact with the tool so so as it was done in the simulation in the experiments similarly for the the velocity again this comes this direction or orientation will come from the tool path uh, and it's it's a very critical thing i just defined it based on my own calculations in a rough way but you have to really refine it so that when you deform it it goes along the path and you have a very nice deformation here and it, how fast it goes i will use a velocity of 8 millimeters per second in this case all right and i have defined an amplitude for that because the vector solver requires an amplitude so and why i have defined an amplitude this is another important question because if i show you the amplitude and you will find it why it's useful in a way because initially i don't really apply any pressure and i let it rotate the, this thing and this sheet so that it's stabilized and once it's stabilized and i incrementally increase the speed in this direction from that where zero value to eight millimeters per second and then up to two seconds it will take it will basically increase linearly up to eight millimeter per second and then it will move at eight millimeters per second up till the end of the simulation so that's what i have done just to avoid any distortion mesh distortion issues and everything is stabilized before this contact is established between the die and the sheet and the tool itself so this was what i have done on this side if again if i have missed anything let me remember no i don't think i have missed anything another important thing is i haven't defined any temperature so again if i go back to the interactions if i want to do thermomechanical analysis then when i define my interaction properties here then i can select the frictional heating heat generation which is again which gives you how much heat is generated due to the friction so you can specify or you can see all of the energy which is all of the friction energy is converted into temper into heat energy or you can specify a percentage again this comes from the experiments in this case i haven't used any to keep things simple but if you use this thing then you obviously cannot go and use the step as the dynamic step but you will have to select you will have to select a thermomechanical or thermo temperature displacement explicit analysis so that you have a temperature degree of freedom in the elements or, and it can solve for temperature evolution as well so this was the, about the loading i hope i haven't missed anything but if i miss anything please comment below or get in touch and i will explain meshing again so for meshing again you can see these these two parts are rigid so we don't need to match them but for the sheet we have created a mesh again if i show you the mesh for so this this part has no meshing but this part has here so if i show you the mesh again this is there's a trick you see i haven't used many elements in the thickness direction but to save my time but i have used explicit linear element with reduced integration and to avoid the hourglassing effect which is a problem with the reduced integration in elements in the severe deformation problems i have used enhanced hourglass control so that to avoid that zero energy modes or our glassing effect so that is there and i already mentioned about the uh, ale which i have used in the step module so that's pretty much it you just go create a job submit and you see it's completed once it's completed you can go to the results and you see the results are ready and you can really play with them things like the same model and you see how it deforms again if you're not happy with the tool path it's coming back so you might have to have multiple paths as i showed you in the video as well it depends on the process designer you design decide what to do by but i hope with this tutorial you will be able to simulate the whole process so good luck with that and if you have any question then please feel free to ask me thank you very much and bye for now